Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to beautiful Gulfstream Park, Ron Nicoletti, along with Katie Stazak. And Katie, a special weekend of racing here. No racing yesterday, but we were running Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And now uh, you had a few days off, I had a few days off. Did you hear anything special that's happening at Gulfstream Park? Well, it is Memorial Day on Monday, but really special day here. We are going to be doing a mandatory payout of the Rainbow Six. It's all anybody can talk about. People are estimating it could reach $10 million, maybe even more. They're moving up post times at other tracks because people want to play this bet. So exciting. I cannot wait. How about you? Yeah, but you know what? We got uh, two days that they probably can hit it, and it starts right in race four today with six point three million dollars in the carryover. So the twenty cent Rainbow Six, as you mentioned, if it's not hit on Saturday or Sunday, on Monday, the mandatory payout, and it has just been wild around here. I've done the analysis for those races. It's on our website at GulfstreamPark.com. Not easy at all. We have a minimum of like eleven horses. Maybe one race has. 10 10 horses in it, but it's 11 or 12 horses. Some are oversubscribed. It should be a lot of fun. It's not going to be an easy bet, but uh, you know, if, you do, if you're right, you could win, as you said, 10, 15, or maybe even 20 million dollars. It's not an easy bet. There's a reason this thing hasn't been hit since January, but anybody can play. Why not? That is all I have to say. Why not? And use today and tomorrow, if it's not hit, to practice and start studying because those past performances are out there and ready to be studied. We got a fast main track today. We have a firm serve course. Beautiful day in South Florida. It's going to be in the low 90s, I think I heard, or something like that. It's breezy, but I don't think it'll affect the track. It's sort of a cross breeze. And uh, before we get started and look at our uh, nine race card today, we want to take a trip down memory lane not too long ago, just uh, last week with the Freak Mistakes. And uh, California Chrome, who Katie predicted would win, and I didn't want to believe it, but she was absolutely right. And here's that stretch call, Katie. Here it is. California Chrome was tested a little bit more in the Preakness than he was in the Derby, but really no one was catching him. Another great, impressive win. Another perfect ride, in my opinion, from Victor Espinosa. I think he needs a little bit more credit than he's been given. Nice horse, but needs a nice ride. And uh, we now could have a Triple Crown winner in just two weeks in Belmont Park. Yeah, and you know, when you talk about Rainbow Six Fever, right after Rainbow Six Fever ends on Monday, it's going to kick right into Triple Crown Fever, and it should be a lot of fun with the California Chrome. Uh, it's got to prove you can get that mile and a half Belmont, at Belmont Park, and you can bet it right here at Gulfstream Park. We should have lots of fun going on along with this weekend. Now, we will get to Saturday's action, and we're going to start it off in the first race with a one-mile event. It's a maiden claim, is three and up, $20,000 on the main track, one jockey change on number six, and that uh, you know, rider will be Carlos Olivero, but we want to go back and show a horse that ran exceptionally well on the turf last time out, and that is the number seven, Dolan's Joy. Yep, we've got another video to show you. This is from May 9th. You're going to see Dolan's Joy make a really game effort. Duels all the way down the stretch with a horse named Dusty Moore, who actually runs later on in today's card. So you can bet I like Dolan's Joy in this race, so I'm also going to have Dusty Moore later. But you'll see battles all the way down the stretch. Just misses by a head. This was against $25,000 maiden claimers. And uh, he was on the grass that day. He'll be running on dirt today, but I think he's found the right level of competition. Yeah, I mean, looks like the one to beat. If you're looking at the board now, very early in the wagering, up there at 2-5, to five, that's number 7, Dolan's Joy, from the Peter Wildebond, and ridden today by the one and only Edgar Prado. So, well, that's to like about number 7, Dolan's Joy. Yeah. Anybody else on the opening uh, ticket that you used? I threw in Supreme Privilege at 4-1 to one in the morning line. He's taking a bit of a drop in class. He ran against $40,000 maiden claimers last time. And three starts back, he was third in a maiden special weight event at this distance. So I threw him in there. And also, congrats, Rob. Again, he started out running in a maiden special weight, taking a little bit of a drop in class. And uh, he was second last time out, closing well against $25,000 maiden claimers up in Tampa. We got our uh, second and third choices just flip-flop, but we're both in agreement. 
with number seven, and that's Dolan's Joy going from the turf to dirt, and that's a good angle with the uh, trainer Peter Walder. Uh, second race is, is on the turf. It's one mile and one sixteenth, a claiming event. Phillies advance three year olds up. The claiming price $16,000. Scratch the one, Cuties Rosie. Also scratch the main track only participant, number nine, Wild Kira. I went with the two sweet dreaming, and I see that you did too. I did. There's a lot to like about this mare. She's coming off two very solid efforts and what I think should be two very solid wins. Two starts back for this $16,000 tag she won, but last time she was second in a starter allowance and she lost by just a head that day and she had a pretty rough trip that day having to check around the first turn. Uh, she's beaten two other fillies already that are in this field and she's already equaled her win total from last year in half as many starts in 2014, so I say she's going to double that win total from last year today. Well, we're in agreement with the top pick. I threw the four in the second spot, and that's Grant Sabana, as you mentioned, beating the neck by Sweet Dreaming back on April 13th, and then uh, get beat, beat by her again last time out by three and a half lengths, but uh, I think she may be able to get the best of her nemesis today, man, making the third start of her current form cycle, so I don't know if anybody's going to beat Sweet Dreaming in there, but I threw Grant Sabana on my ticket. Uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of a price. Katie's got the six and the number eight, El Benedat. And El Benedat, talking about Peter Walder and Edgar Prado, another horse from them. Absolutely. Peter Walder's winning at 29% so far this meet. Yeah, he's doing great in the summer meeting here at Gulfstream Park. He does great all the time at Gulfstream Park. We're going back to a fast main track for our third race of the afternoon. This one is one mile and one sixteenth. It's a starter optional claimer for three-year-olds and up. The claiming level is $12,500. Scratch the number three, Blue Grass Jam. I went with the two CD Gold. You went with the two CD Gold. Hard not to go with the number two CD Gold. Absolutely. This is a horse coming out of the Safi Joseph Barn who has been doing exceptionally well with his claims so far this meet. And this gelding has yet to be worse than second since Joseph claimed him on March 15th. Team. And he's coming off a really nice three and three quarter length win, going seven furlongs here on May 9th. I see him duplicating that effort today. Yeah, and ridden today by Edgar Zayas, and he's really having an exceptional summer meeting. He really rides well at Gulfstream Park. Number eight, Whiskey Tap, through his uh, productive campaign up in Tampa, could be duplicated right back here at Gulfstream Park. He shipped in, he defeated $6,250 claimants, going seven eighths of a mile, and he's a son of Tappet, and he's really consistent this year. Six starts with three wins in a second. So hard not to have whiskey tap on the ticket there. And I'm thinking maybe you got to go in and exact the box in this race. Anybody else in the, the third race? Absolutely. I throw in, have the last word. He's been in the money in seven of his last nine starts. And in five of six starts here at Gulfstream, that's 83% of the time being in the money here at Gulfstream. Compare that to just 55% of the time being in the money everywhere else. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll look at the uh, Rainbow Six a portion of our day. Races four through nine. We'll be right back. This is a moment of history. Treat yourself like royalty when wagering on the Sport of Kings with ExpressBet. ExpressBet is the legal, fast, and secure way to bet on over 300 tracks around the world. No other website offers you greater value with 100% free wagering, past performances, video replays, and daily picks. Sign up today to receive a bonus and start earning points with XP rewards. Earn even more when you refer your friends. It's the most rewarding experience in racing. ExpressBet, your way to play. OBS is the leading two-year-old source to the world. The OBS June sale has produced such prominent runners as 2013 Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner Golden Sense and 2014 Fountain of Youth Stakes winner Wildcat Red. Nearly 1,200 quality racing prospects will be offered at the OBS June sale of two-year-olds at Horses of Racing Age June 17th through 20th. OBS, we measure success by performance. Welcome back. Uh, let's set the stage now for the Rainbow Six today between races four through nine. We have a fast main track, firm turf course, $6.3 million in the carryover. And here's the story. If this is not hit on Friday and, I mean, on Saturday, and I'm so used to being here on Friday, on Saturday and Sunday, Monday, day, we get that mandatory payout on Memorial Day. But that's not to say nobody can hit it today and bring down $6.3 million in Katie, only a 20-cent wager. Absolutely. Bring your aim game today. You could spoil the party. <laughs> All I have to say is if you do happen to hit that pot today, 
Please share. <laughs> our, our race, uh, six for all, uh, fourth race, six for all, and claims three year olds and up, $6,250. Now we're going to scratch the four great Victorian, and the number six will be ridden by jockey Edgar Zayas. And I think we have a video in this race, Katie. We do. There are quite a few horses running in this race that have seen each other before. We're going to take a look at a race from May 11th. You're going to see PJ's Magical Wink, Newspaper Boy, and Mia's Rocket all running in this race. PJ's Magical Wink closes well. He wins that day. Newspaper Boy was second. Mia's Rocket third. Um, I think we could see quite a few of these horses hitting the board in today's race. Well, you know, uh, you mentioned Newspaper Boy. Boy, he finishes second an awful lot of times. So, Newspaper Boy may be the day that he gets out of it. We both went with the number two on Top Duty Blues. This one is really taking a significant drop to the $6,250 acclaim level. First starts he's facing really good competition, and that was in a series of tough $62,500 optional claiming races here. But that was last winter. He's an obvious choice, but the old red flag should be flying with this consistency drop in competition. Absolutely. I have in my notes here, colossal drop in <laughs> class. And like you mentioned, he's seen some nice horses. You look at his past performances and you see names like A Priority, who's grade one stakes place, grade three stakes winner. What I like, you like numbers here. He's trained by Rashan Creaky, who is winning at a 43% clip this race meet and is ridden by Kevin Prigger who is winning at a 35% clip this race meet. Those are some pretty astonishing numbers. Yeah, and this bar known to uh, drop horses where they, uh, they want to win. So uh, number two, Duty Blues. We showed you PJ's Magical Wink and, and Newspaper Boy, who are uh, going to deliver one of these days. He's got to win one of these races. He's been second a bunch of times, so Newspaper Boy. Uh, on our tickets, we're, we're in agreement with the two, one, and three. We're going to go to the fifth race. This is a six furlong claiming event. Three-year-olds up Phillies and Mares. $12,500, scratch the four, La Marquisa, and number seven, Silk and Sequence. And what, you know what? We got another video we want to show you in here. Why not? This is a race from May 9th. You're going to see Ben First Baby, who is the two in this race, and who is this lady, the five. Um, on this day, they're the three and the four. Ben First Baby closes really well, and who is this lady is third. None of them are going to beat the winner here, but I think you can see them getting a little bit closer to being in front today. Um, ben First Baby has been in the money in five of her last six starts, and the one race where she did didn't hit the board, was two starts back, and that was her first try on turf. Obviously didn't like that surface, so back to dirt today. I say you throw that race out. Well, we have our top selections here. Flip-flop, I went with the three. Yes, Miss Olga, who certainly loves Gulfstream Park. Four previous races here with two wins, a second and a third. Now drops to this $12,500 claiming level. Showed really good speed last time out, weekend late, but that was against the Lowen Runners. It was a cross town, and that was the last time out. And then if you look at its race upstate, that that was against $25,000 claimers up at Tampa back on April 19th. I'm going to go with the old horse for course angle in here and put the number three, Yes, Ms. Oga, on top of my ticket, along with the number two, ben first, ben, Benny First Baby, for all the reasons you mentioned. And who is that? Uh, who is this lady, the number five in there? So just flip flopping around. Might want to use all three of those in your Rainbow Six ticket. We are going back. To the turf for our sixth race of the afternoon, one mile and one sixteenth. Maiden claim is three and up. The claiming price, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Scratch the three, Confederate money, and the number four, Diane's Danny Boy. I went with the eight laws of the city. It looks like we just get a, a, a carbon copy stamp here. We got a lot of the same horses on top tonight. I want to hear your reason why you use the number eight, laws of the city. First, I just want to say that we do have a lot of the same picks, but in this race in particular, I found it a bit of a head scratcher. I think it's wide open, and this isn't a race that I would single anybody on your ticket. I went with Laws of the City because the only time he's hit the board in his 10, case, 10 race career have been when he's run for $25,000 or less, and today's tag is the lowest that he's ever run for, so I think he's finally going to find the right level of competition, and I think he can get it done today. Yeah, I think he's spotted perfectly against this uh, level of competition as you mentioned. I, I use the number nine head wing in second. This one beating the neck at this level and distance back on April 26. Now stretches out. Last time broke from post 10. Made a pretty pretty good middle move then flattened out a little bit. We're facing 
similar competition that was going a mile. I just think he improved the post, not that improved, but moving in one one spot today. Uh, and just the level of competition looks good for number nine, head wing, and close it out with number ten, driven by desire. Yeah, driven by desire, didn't start running on the grass until about four starts into his career, and that's when he started hitting the board for the first time. So I think he's found his preferred distance and can improve. Well, let's flip the page and go back to a fast main track, the seventh furlong event. And this is a maiden special weight for three-year-olds and up. The person here is $36,000. And there's some pretty nice horses in here. We got a couple from Hall of Fame trainer Alan Jerkins. And if you did not hear the news, Alan Jerkins now will stable here throughout the year. He'll be here not only in the summer, of course, during the uh, championship meet, which kicks off uh, uh, and the 1st of December. I went with the number six easement in here, and I see you went with the number three DNA approved and I can't knock you on that I was having trouble which one to pick in this race I really like this horse he debuted in a stakes and his stakes place he's coming off a fourth place finish in which he didn't really have the best trip and he's from the Stanley Gold Barn who I think does a really nice job with his young horses yeah I mean the D DNA approved was made, as you mentioned facing stakes caliber competition before that the uh, uh, layoff you know was during his freshman season makes that three-year-old debut for a good bond but I did go with the number six easement and that's that's one of the two horses in the race from Hall of Fame trainer Alan Jerkins. This one's going to stretch out to seven furlongs. He returned from the freshening. He finished the fast, closing the second against Tougher. Uh, a, a really tough group of maiden special weight competition was going six and a half furlongs. It just looks at the past performance screens for a little more distance, and that's exactly what he's going to get uh, with uh, the seven furlongs of this race. I got DNA approved, and the other horse from... Uh, uh, Alan Jerkins is the number four horses. Uh, Going to get blinkers today. Had a really eventful trip last time out. Yeah, I think with Eastman, he's been taking small drops in class since he really started his career last June. And now he's getting closer and closer to getting that elusive win. And he's been in the money in four of his last five. I will never count out the chief in Alan Jerkins. No, you can't. He's uh, fantastic. He had a, a couple of nice winners here already at the summer meeting. Our eighth race is six furlong sprint allowance up for claimant. Phillies and mastery and up. Claiming price $62,500. I went with the one, Kipling's Joy. You went with the number four, Salmara. Let's hear one. I did. Salamara Sal is coming off a third place finish in the Hollywood Beach Stakes here on April 12th. And this is a pretty accomplished filly. She won a stakes in just her second career start and has run in numerous graded stakes and faced some pretty good competition. You look at her past performances, she's run in the grade one chandelier over in Del Mar, the grade two Adirondack. She was second in behind a really nice filly that we know, Kauai Katie. And she's been in the money in four of her last five. I think this is a really good spot for her. Yeah, and you could see in her last race, she broke a step slow. You cannot break a step slow when a horse like our free roll is in it. That's a pretty quick horse. So uh, uh, that break might have caused us something in that race. I went with the one Kipling Joy. Going to turn back to three quarters, track the pace last time, finish second behind a horse that I really like, and that's called Classy Point. And that was in the $62,500 optional claim. Going seven eighths of a mile. Marty Wilson's got his go to job. Uh, uh, Gilbert Tramafi handing inside post. I looked at their records, uh, you know, go, do when I was doing Monday's card. Together here at Gulfstream Park, they're winning something like 35%. That's Marty Wilson and jockey Gilbert Tramafi. So uh, we have our top two flip flop. We both have the number six, My Sweet Dove, who is two for two in the money locally. Yeah, this is another filly with considerable stakes experience, and she won the Sandpiper Stakes last December at Tampa Bay Downs. She's coming off a third place effort also at Tampa uh, in a $75,000 optional claimer. Well, let's wrap up the Saturday action with a mile in the 16th turf race. Claim is three year olds and up. Non winners are two in life. The claiming price $25,000. Scratch all those also eligible entries 13, 14, and 15. And once again, we're in agreement. We both have number seven, a valid concept on top of my ticket. This one, a really game $50,000 maiden winner, winner here on April 12th. Uh, now he's dropping into this two lifetime acclaimer after finishing fourth behind a pretty tough group of $25,000 allow allowance optional claimers. Uh, at this same distance, Milt Wolfson, Edgar Zayas. Ultra, ultra consistent horse. He's hit the board in four of his last five and eight of his last 12 starts. That's pretty impressive. And the only win of his career came here at Gulfstream at this distance. So I think he gets it done again.
A horse, a horse that I had in second was the five. We just had our two here. Uh, Flip-flopped again. Tis now my choice. Stepping up to this $25,000 level. Shipped in from Lone Star. And really ran okay. And he came in the length of defeating $12,500. Two lifetime claimers. Going a mile in the 16th. So I, I think Tis my choice. Proves he can run well here. And I think belongs on the ticket. Yeah, he's been adapting pretty well to South Florida after coming over from the Dallas Keene Barn over in Texas. And he's run well on turf, but his only win of his career came on dirt. That's the only reason why I didn't have him higher. I mentioned earlier Dusty Moore, who had beaten um, currently the 2-5 to five favorite in our first race. He's a lightly raced colt that I think is coming into his own. He broke his maiden last time out here at Gulfstream at this distance, running for the same money. So why not? We might see a little bit of deja vu. He, again, beat Dolan's Joy by just a head, who I really like in race, race one here. Yeah, I mean, if you have uh, watched Dolan's Joy, he runs well in the first. You sort of got to put Dusty Moore on your Rainbow Six ticket. Well, that's how Katie and I see Saturday's action. Remember, tomorrow we'll have an eight-race card, and then we go into the Memorial Day card Monday with 10-race action and the mandatory payout. What a day that's going to be. I cannot wait. Two days away, I feel like we've been building up to it, and it was just never going to get here, but it is, and it's so close. It should you know be what? a really fun day. I'm sorry, Kay. You know what? I, I can't imagine. You know, they're saying possibly 15, 20 million, which is unbelievable. It's only a 20 cent wager, so a lot of people got to do a lot of betting, and uh, you got to get on it today. You can get the past performances and uh, get right to work. Just think about the things that you could do with that sum of money. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm already thinking. For Katie, it's Ron. Have a good day. We'll see you soon. Thanks.